Hello friends, welcome to Garden with Creekside. We just got the huge shipment of Proven Winners Perennials from Walters Gardens. Stay tuned to see what we've got. Hello friends, it is Jenny with Garden with Creekside. It is late in the afternoon and we just got our FedEx delivery, a pallet full of both proven winners and uh, perennials and some other great perennials that we love. Walters Gardens is a fantastic nursery in Michigan. They are the growers, suppliers of all the proven winner perennials. Um, so this is just the start of our first really plant deliveries that are just going to continue from now for weeks and weeks and weeks to come. I thought it would be really fun for you to come along with us so you could see some of the perennials, the new perennials that we've gotten and um, just see what it means to be a grower and how these plants come to us. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to break this down and get all of these boxes into the greenhouse because even though these are perennials um, the greenhouse right now is unheated but it'll just give it a little bit of a, a buffer for tonight i think tonight's going to get down to 27 is the sun has already gone down and it is getting chillier by the minute so we're going to get these unboxed and in the greenhouse and then we can chat some more Jackson and I got all of the plants in here in the greenhouse and then Jerry came home and we did decide to go ahead and bump the heat on just a little bit to take the little edge off for tonight. So you might be hearing that running. That is the heater just to kind of kind of take the edge off for these plants. I'm not going to go through right now and talk about each individual variety of plant that we've gotten. We'll do that in just a little bit when we plant them up. But I do want to take this opportunity to talk to you about the different ways that perennials come to us. The vast majority of these plants in this shipment are what we call bare root. And bare root is exactly what it sounds like. It means it is just the root that is coming to you. There is no foliage on it at all. Now, this particular one, we've got a lot of different types of baptiza I'm trying to see what kind this is. Um, so this is dark chocolate. So bare root, clearly, I mean, you have roots and that's it. They pack it in some sawdust because you don't want these overly wet because um, they can get moldy. So the sawdust is in there just to kind of absorb any extra moisture. Now, if you are buying bare root plants, because there's a lot of companies out there, mail order companies, that you as a homeowner, a non-professional, can order bare roots. When you're ordering bare roots, the bigger the better. Because remember with perennials, your value is in your root stock, not necessarily the foliage. So you wanna be very aware of the size of the root that you are getting. These are really, really nice. We love Walters Gardens because they do just such a phenomenal job. Um, sending us massive root systems like okay for example look at this this is i think this is a baptiza also this is blueberry sunday are you ready look at that so this will go into a proven winners one gallon container the roots we will have to actually curl up and stuff in there because i mean these root systems will take up that whole entire pot, just absolutely gorgeous. Now, of course, you'll sh we'll show you when we're potting them up, that right here, this is are the eyes. This is what would be popping out of the ground. So basically, we're gonna bring the soil level just to about right here. You're not gonna completely bury this, um, but all of these roots go in there. So you can see big root system is gonna equal a big, gorgeous plant for you in the spring. So we're going to tuck these back in here. 
So we've got bare roots. So that's one way they can come to you. Another way that they can come to you is actually as a baby plant. So we call these liners. Now these are really nice size. You can see the container. This is the size of the root system on this. This is um, black pearl euchara from Proven Winners. Fantastic foliage plant, great perennial. Again, you wanna be very aware of what size you're getting. This is a nice, big, fat root system. Will do really well, it will take off and be a very, very happy plant. So you can also get liners. So we, like I said, most of these, we have a ton of different types of baptiza in here. We have some daylilies. Look at these daylilies. Again, nice size roots, doing really, really well. Um, just a really happy plant in there. We've got Shasta daisies. I'm just gonna let Jerry kind of come in here. So there's Shasta daisies. This is the Daisy May from Proven Winners. Um, lots of different things. And then one of my absolute favorites is the Ascot Rainbow. Ascot Rainbow, if I can get it out of here. I can't. So I'll just pull. It's one of my most favorite foliage perennials. We'll talk about it more. See, I get so excited that I start talking about the plants. I told you I wasn't going to do that. We'll talk about it later. So it is late in the afternoon. You can tell that it is getting dark. The plants are gonna to go to bed. We're gonna go back to the house because it's been a long day. We've gotten a lot of good work done. We'll come back when we're potting up and show you exactly how we pot these plants up. Stay tuned. Hello friends, welcome back. It is a couple of days later since we first saw you when the shipment of these perennials came in from Walter's Garden. It is a gorgeous afternoon. Um, and so Jerry and I are just out here potting up these perennials together. So he is working on all of those perennials that came from Walters that I showed you in that initial shipment. So he is working on that. Later that same night, we had a delivery again from Walters Garden, but this was all sorts of fantastic new introductions both by proven winners and walters that will be available in the coming years and they asked us if we wanted to trial some of these plants and of course i jumped at the chance and i said yes just send me anything that you think will work in our zone 7b climate and so that is what they did now forgive me if i've already mentioned this before but Walters Gardens is a great nursery, a huge nursery in Michigan, and they are the supplier of all the Proven Winners perennials. They do their, I mean, they do non-branded material and they have great introductions from themselves, but if you're gonna get a perennial from Proven Winners, it's gonna come through Walters Gardens. They are a wholesale only, so retailers, customers can't buy directly from them but they have a fantastic website so even if you're not able you know a nursery and you're going to be buying from them go to their website and just plug in the name of the perennial that you're looking for and they have just a fantastic website that they give you growing tips companion plants so like these are what is this so flocks Opulescence. opulescence so this is a new flocks from proven winners so if you want to know more about the opulescence flocks which is a great one you can just go to their website waltersgardens.com plug it in it will tell you how to grow these it will tell you what growing conditions all the plant specs and all of you know what other plants that you can plant with it so that's that over here so you can just keep on potting Get to work, mister. So these are some of the new introductions that they sent us. Now we've talked about it before with this shipment that came in that's retail for the nursery. Some of them are plugs, which this whole tray is plugs, and they sent me five plants of each new introduction because they know that sometimes, you know, yeah, we kill plants too, or you plant them in different areas. In some areas they thrive, some areas they don't thrive. So they just didn't send me one, so they sent me five. Again, we love our Walters Gardens. Um, but they also sent me a bunch of 
bare roots. So I've got a whole nother box of bare roots. So I'm just gonna get these planted up. As I come across ones that I know about, I'll tell you a little bit about them. And of course, we'll throw the pictures up, the names, the specs, and all of that on the screen. Some of them are so brand new, they're not gonna be introduced until 2022. So all I know is the name and I don't even have plant specs on them yet. Um, so I'll have to be calling Walter's Gardens and say, hey, I need a little help here to know what I'm doing. So we're just gonna get these potted up and just chit chat while we're doing it. So there's a lot of questions sometimes about what kind of potting soil you should use with your plants. And on one hand, potting soil, get a good quality potting soil. And if you have a good quality plant, it really won't matter. On the other hand, especially on our end, potting soil really does matter. Um, we are using a perennial mix for all of these because it has a lot more bark in it than what like your, especially like your seed germination mix or what we use for annuals. So it has a lot more aeration in it because the vast majority of our perennials do not like to have really wet feet. They need to drain more as opposed to annuals that can hold on to water. Yeah, and this will have a lot more peat in it than like a shrub mix. You know, shrub mix will be almost all bark. All bark. You know, and it'll have some perlite and some peat moss. Right, so there's a little bit, I mean, there's just some variation. But for the most part, for the, you know, the average homeowner, when you're, you know, you're getting this and you're taking it home, you just go ahead and stick it straight into your native soil. We preach, especially here in the South, it has clay soil to never amend your soil, like just the hole. If you're gonna amend your bed, you amend the whole bed, not just the planting hole, because with our clay soil, it really holds on to water. So if you then go and put this kind of mix or just a regular potting mix in your hole, it's really gonna hold the water and your, your plants can rot because, um, so it's really important just if you're, when you're at home and you're planting it in your native soil, just use your native soil. You don't really need to amend unless you're doing some top dressing with some compost. All right, we are rocking and rolling now. So we misplaced the tags which is a good point with proven winners because I know a lot of times people have questions about, um, you know, why sometimes a proven winner's in a PW pot and sometimes they're not. Um, if you're buying a, a proven winner perennial or shrub, then they have to be in the PW pot. Only certain annuals have to be in a PW pot, but everybody will have a PW tag. So if you're buying a plant that is supposed to be a proven winner's plant and it does not have a proven winner's tag, you need to be very leery because um, one, it could be not what you're supposed to be buying or like it's not the actual plant that you're, you want or um, they have not properly gone about the proper channels to get that plant. The first one we um, potted up, the first daisy I did was the new Banana Cream 2 Shasta Daisy. I love Banana Cream, the original. The um, new one is supposed to be even 
hold its color longer, have more blooms. Um, just a great kind of improvement on our original beloved banana cream. And then this guy is Marshmallow. So um, it's a new one to the Amazing Daisies. And this is Marshmallow. Marshmallow is an extremely fluffy bloom. It is just a gorgeous clear white flower um, with a nice little pink center to it. Just is going to be a fantastic one. Of course, this is going to be full sun and it's going to be about 18 to 20 inches tall. So it's going to be a nice size. So when, when we get these plugs from Walters, they are a nice substantial size, really, really nice root system. And it's really simple. You fill up your pot full of potting soil. You make a little divot with your finger and you just stick it in. Easy peasy. So it's not, you know, terribly hard to plant these. You get into quite a rhythm and you just fill and plug, fill and plug. And that's what we do. That's why the kids, you know, you get an assembly line and the kids can get in here too and be filling pots, filling pots, filling pots, trailers full. Somebody runs them into the greenhouse. Yeah, so we can just um, lower down the Kubota and stick them all in here because we learned really quickly last year that if we have trial plants or any kind of plant that's not to be sold for retail, then um, somehow they find a way of disappearing. So we have quickly learned not to keep these plants down here at the nursery. Oh, there's more pots. I don't think we're gonna have room. Next, we have the Amazing Daisies Spun Silk. And the Spun Silk, whereas Marsha, Marshmallow was a nice, tight, fluffy um, bloom on it, the Spun Silk has the exact opposite. It is very, almost like a shredded flower on it, but extremely white with that nice, big yellow center. A really great, beautiful, plant for sure that I can't wait to have in the garden. This would be great in the backyard patio because they're just that great white color. Okay, these are my pots. Right. So, I have my cheat sheet. What is that? Dark chocolate. Baptiza. We got lots of Baptiza this year. Baptiza is a great perennial if you don't know. Look at this great root system. It is one, I love Baptiza because it's so easy, just low maintenance. Um, this is dark chocolate, gorgeous foliage on it and even prettier blooms. I mean, they're just, they're easy. Right? Yeah. Easy. Easy to grow. Easy to grow easy to have in your garden, very long lived. All right, so my next one is Black Light Phlox, which is brand new, obviously. <laughs> Sorry, y'all, it's the end of the day. Um, gorgeous paniculata phlox. So that means it's gonna be a really upright, um, cause it's gonna be like t almost two and a half feet tall. And it's pure white blooms. It's gonna be stunning and so there are these are obviously bare roots here and there's actually already a little bit of green but this is why we love Walters because look at that root system I mean look at that that sucker is huge so basically you throw a little dirt in there and then you snuggle them down just kind of zhuzh them And you want the crown to be sticking just slightly above. Try to make it sure it's in the center. Jerry's the expert. So, see? And then if you get it too deep, you can always just kind of gently pull it up. Let's try that.
So when we're in here planting perennials, it's just a big family affair. Quite the assembly line. What's your favorite thing about growing? Like, what what is it that you, why do you enjoy growing plants? Well, I'm just serious, like the horticulture, like the aspect, like you talked about, like being able to take the dirt and all that stuff. Like, why do you like activities like this? I just like being outside. Um, I like just the simplicity of doing it. Yeah. I mean, this does you know, not require I mean, a lot of thought. Yeah, there's times for thought, and there's time for just taking a, putting the dirt in the pot and sticking right. the plant in the pot. And it's kind of a mindless activity. It, it is, it kind of relaxes a little bit. Right. And then, um, yeah, and then there's the whole aspect of watching it. Like watching it turn from that yeah. into yeah. a glorious. Yeah. Yeah, it's very satisfying. Well, that's why I was asking, because you've talked about a lot that you like so many times. So like, for example, we were just doing the greenhouse, like we put the poly on the greenhouse and that requires a lot of, I mean, it's physical labor, but it's also a lot of mental exhaustion because you have to make sure that everything's working at the same right, you know, keeping track of everybody. Whereas this doesn't require a lot of Thinking. Yeah, I mean, yesterday, you know, where we had to just have everybody on the same page and trying to make sure everybody's you know, going with the same direction. Right. <laughs> Bless you. So, and this is just not. Yeah. And there's something about oh, the yeah. smell of potting soil. Yeah, good soil. Good soil. Yeah, Jenny mentioned that, you know, about good soil, you know, we're going to do a, a video on good soil. We and, are. And specifically uh, retail soil. Right. And so it'll be very. give you some reasons as to why we pick the soils that we sell here at the nursery. Right. Why we do it. I mean, we're, I'm really picky about soil. <laughs> <laughs> just a little bit. Yeah, just a little bit. But you got to remember that soil is like the food for the plants. So just like if you only eat fast food three times a day, every day for, you know, 10 years or whatever, you're not going to be very healthy. Yeah, and the reason I say that is because we've, we've gone through it as a grower. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, if you're just a retailer, I mean, not just a retailer, but, re, you know, but it's just, I mean, when you're growing a plant from a small stage or a plug stage, I mean, you run into issues if you have incorrect soil, and you see the difference in the, these potting mixes and how they, the chemistry works with the plant, right. and how we fertilize with that chemistry that's already been, you know, supplied to us. So it's a big deal. Right. That's why I say, like, soil on one hand is very simple, but on the other hand, it's extremely complex. Right. Just like with anything, there's a lot of cheap soil. Oh yeah. Cheaply made with. Lot, everybody's trying to come up with a different type of 
mixture. And there's a lot that goes into it. Well, I mean, just like everything in life, you get what you pay for. Yeah. So. so. Mm -hmm. We're gonna kind of go through that. We'll go through that in another video. And it'll be really applicable to you so that you can take that information and put it to your own garden. Um, so that way that you can have gorgeous, amazing containers and plants in your own yard, in your own space. You don't have to own a nursery to have to, you know, be, be mindful of the soil that you use. All right, so I just did opening act romance. It is another perennial phlox. This one's gonna be a little bit smaller. It's only gonna be 20 inches. It's gonna be a really beautiful, like a lavender color lots of long season of color and it's an earlier bloomer so that's really neat and um, they have a little white halo in them really neat so you can pair these with of course like dianthus and daylilies and shasta daisies and all sorts of wonderful things did you get my material sticks mm -hmm. Dirt. dirt. We have soil. Mm. <laughs> All right, knife man. Cut her open. Bags do rip from the top of this as fast. Well, they're heavy. One day, maybe we'll really have made it and we'll get a potting machine. Yeah. Ah. That's what we dream about. It's what our kids dream about. It wouldn't work for this stuff. Oh, there's a machine out there somewhere that would do it. <laughs> so if you're a manufacturer of, uh, you know, potty machines, we'll be happy to test some out for you. We'll have our own little trial, I don't know, machinery. So what I'm gonna do now is, this is a sedum. It's a new one for the Rock and Grove sedum series. This is called Coral Jade. Again, ooh, look at that. It's got some little, little foliage on it. Let's see if you can see that. Can you see that? So coral jade is going to be a tall sedum. It's not a little short sedum like, um, you know, lemon coral. This is going to be like 16 to 18 inches. And what's neat is the color on it will be a beautiful, obviously, like a corally pink color. Um, so great one, obviously. It's a sedum, so it's going to be full sun. It is, let's see... Another great thing about it is that it's a, you know, with these types of sedums, they are fall blooming. So in that time of the year when things are looking sad and you need a little pick-me-up in your garden, the sedum starts blooming and it's gorgeous. Hopefully these will take right off because these are... Nice. I love the color on them.
All right, friends, so we have gotten all of the new trial plants are planted up. They are nice in their new home, in their containers. Jerry and Emily were able to get some of the perennials for the retail sales. Those are ready, but not. we still have more to do. So as you can tell, it's getting a little bit dark. The afternoon is quickly coming to an end. We are gonna go ahead and like I mentioned before, the trial plants do not stay down here at the garden center because it will never fail that somebody will pick it up or on accident or what have you. So Jerry and I are gonna go ahead and take these up to the production greenhouse because I already have a little corner going of Jenny's plants touch and die section. We're gonna get those up there but I think we're gonna go ahead and sign off. You're gonna go with us, but we're gonna go ahead and sign off for right now. I will definitely keep you updated both on their progress, at, progress as they grow in the pot and progress as they grow in the garden. So this will be a whole series that we will just come back to um, in garden tours and nursery updates. So if you have seen something that you like, just kind of stay tuned for these videos that will be coming up really for the rest for the next year so we can tell you our honest opinion on how all of these do because I will give you an honest opinion. Remember there are no bad plants but there is bad plant placement. Some of these will absolutely thrive and maybe some of them don't. That is the whole point of doing a trial garden to see how they do in our area. We'll keep you to, uh, updated for sure. As always, thanks for gardening with Creekside. Now let's go for a ride.